thank you for being the God that you are. Thank you for food on my table. I know that you're able. I want to say thank, thank you. you. Come on, help me, come on. Thank you for all that you've done thus far. Thank you for being the God that you are. Thank you for food on my table. Thank you for food on my table. Thank you for food on my table. How many of you take for food on your table? Come on. Thank you for food on my table. Thank you for food on my table. Thank you for food on my table. Thank you for food. Thank you for food on my table. Come on. Thank you for food on my table. Come on, help me. Come on. Thank you for food on my table. One more time. Thank you for food on my table. Thank you for food on my table. Thank you for food on my table. I know that you're able. I want to say thank you. Come on and say in the house. Amen. Thank you so much for your generosity. How many of y'all enjoyed those first four preachers? Lord, they brought it up in here. Amen. We're so thankful for all of the churches coming together tonight. Isn't this beautiful to see the churches coming together to worship the Lord? We're so thankful. We're going to kick off this second half. Come on, say, you ready for the second half? Amen. The fifth word, I thirst, will be brought to us by Bishop Francis Mills, my big sister. See you, Pastor, of the Tabernacle of Faith. Then the sixth word would be, it is finished. Pastor Albert Billings, the assistant pastor here at Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist. And then we'll wrap it up with the seventh word, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit by Elder Daryl Jones, our youth pastor here at Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church. Come on, let's stand and receive Bishop Mills. Amen. Amen. Oh. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. We give God praise. Amen. Father, we thank you now for all that our eyes have seen thus far, all that our ears have heard, and all that you've done to touch us and move us in this house. We just ask you now, God, to hide me behind the cross of Calvary, that when your people look this way, they see none of me but all of thee. We praise you. We lift you up. We magnify. It is in the mighty name of Jesus we do pray. Amen. Amen. I thirst. Amen. Coming out of the Gospel of John, the 19th chapter, verse 28, and it reads thusly, After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. I thirst thirst amen thirst thirst is a powerful thing uh, anybody ever been thirsty I mean really thirsty where you're so dry you can't really talk your tongue feels like it can't move it cleaves to the roof of your mouth thirsty thirst is a natural feedback between the brain and the body it's the brain telling the body that there's something it needs to stay alive. Hallelujah. Uh, in this fifth word, Jesus saying from the cross, Jesus is saying, I thirst. There, there's something I need to stay alive. I don't know who I'm talking to tonight, but somebody tonight came in the house a little thirsty, knowing that there's something you need to stay alive. Uh, by the time we get to this fifth 
word of Jesus. Uh, Jesus is not being viewed in a much of a very heroic way. Uh, and that first word, Father, forgive them, he's talking to his enemies. Uh, the second word, today thou shalt be with me, he's, he's focusing on the thieves. The third word, woman, behold thy son, he's focusing on his mother. And then that fourth word, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He's focusing on God. But if he gets to this fifth word, his focus is now on himself. J J Jesus says Jesus is focused now on his own personal need, not, not what mama needs, uh, but what he needs right now. Jesus had taken on the sins of the world. Your sins and my sins. Jesus had allowed his enemies uh, to march him from judgment hall to judgment hall. Jesus had allowed his enemies to, to press a crown of thorns on his head. Jesus had endured being whipped and beaten until his skin came off his body. Jesus had carried his cross up Golgotha's hill. He had endured the pain, the shame of nails being in his hand, nails being nailed in his feet, and had just asked God, where are you? Jesus, by this time, was thirsty, but had to help somebody. He wasn't thirsty for the physical water. Jesus was thirsted in a spiritual way. Let us be clear tonight. There's a thirst that you get for the water, but then there's a thirst that you get and you ought to have for tonight for the spiritual water. Somebody ought to be thirsty for Jesus. Somebody ought to be thirsty for God. Jesus was thirsting for a spiritual feeling. He was thirsty for a spiritual presence. He was thirsty for a spiritual, spiritual connection to his father. Oh, y'all know what the word says. The Bible says God cannot stand our sin. And although Jesus was his son, when he took on your sins and my sins and the sins of the world, God could not stand to be in in the presence of his son. He had to allow his son uh, at this moment uh, to be in this place uh, by himself. Uh, Jesus felt uh, God the Father, I don't feel you no more. Uh, am I talking to anybody? Have you ever been in a place uh, where you didn't feel God's presence? Uh, have you ever been through some stuff uh, where you didn't feel God's presence? Uh, have you ever been in a place uh, where you cried out to God? Uh, God, I don't feel you today. God, I don't see you nowhere. God, I don't hear your voice no more. God, I need to feel you today. I need you right here, Father. I need you to touch me, Father. I know I'm going through some stuff. I know I'm going through a situation. I know I'm feeling like I'm all by myself. But you said in your word, you never leave me nor forsake me. I don't know if I'm talking to anybody. May I'm preaching to myself. I can testify. I've been in some places. I've been in some situations. I had to ask the Father, where are you, Jesus? I've been crying out to you. I don't feel you nowhere. I know you told me. I know what the Bible says, but the Bible right now doesn't seem like it's right here with me. I know your word said you would be right with me. You'd be with me to the end of the world. But where are you now, Jesus? I don't sense you. I don't feel you. I don't hear you. Where are you? I can hear Jesus. Oh, Father, I know what you told me to do. I know what you sent me to do. I know I told you I'd do it. But all the pain, all the shame, all what I'm going through, Father, where are you? I need to feel you. I need to hear your voice. I need to know your presence. Father, Father, I don't hear you. I don't feel you. 
but God could not stand to see his son with the sins of the world covering his body. He and the father were no longer in that relationship that Jesus was used to. Jesus was thirsty. Jesus was thirsty. He wanted that relationship again. I don't know who I'm talking to, uh, but somebody in the house, uh, I hear you saying tonight, uh, I've been thirsting a long time. Uh, I've been trying to drink enough water to fill my thirst. Uh, I've been trying to drink enough soda to kill my thirst. Uh, I've been trying to drink enough alcohol to take the thirst away. Uh, I've been trying to fill up on stuff, but ain't nothing up. Uh, can't nothing. I've been through enough people. They ain't feeling my thirst. I've been through enough women. They ain't feeling my thirst. I've been on enough dates with men. They can't feel my thirst. Jesus, Jesus, I need you. Come into my heart. I need you. Feel my thirst. Fill me up till I overflow. Fill me up. I'm thirsty. I need you, Lord Jesus. Father, I thirst. I thirst for your touch. I thirst for your healing. I thirst for your anointing. I thirst for your blessing. I thirst for your deep. I thirst for you. I thirst. I thirst. I thirst. The psalmist says, it says over in Psalms 42, as the deer panteth, for the brook, so my soul uh, panted for thee. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I've come to tell somebody, you need to start panting, you need to start seeking, you need a relationship. Are you thirsty for Jesus? Are you thirsty tonight? Are you thirsty? Somebody in the house tonight, you've been operating on empty. You've been operating on desert. You've been operating on dry. You need to be filled. You need to tell God, I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty. Fill me. Fill me. Fill me. Fill me. I got anybody in the house want to be filled, need to be filled. I've been running on empty for a long time. Tonight, tonight. On Good Friday, I came to get filled. I want to be filled all the way up. I don't want to be half full. I don't want to be three quarters. I want to be filled till I run over. Fill me. Fill me. Fill me. Fill. Cause I thirst. Cause I thirst. I, I, I want. Cause I thirst. I want to be filled to overflow. Fill me up, Lord. I got anybody in the house? Anybody in the house? You ain't got to tell me. I just need you to tell him. I need you to look up to Jesus. Look up towards heaven. Tell the Father, tonight, 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 my night. I ain't going to worry about what other folk doing. I ain't going to worry about who's on the side. I ain't gonna worry about who's behind me. I ain't gonna worry about who's in front. Tonight's my night. I came to get full. I came to get filled. Feel me. Hallelujah. Feel me. I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty. Holla, baby. Holla, baby. You thirsty tonight. Holla. Holla. Cry out. Cry out. Cry out. Open your mouth. Tell God, fill me. Fill me up. Fill me up. Fill me.
Now you might as well praise him. Come on. You might as well give him the glory. Hey. Hey. Dare you to give him the glory. Hey. I promise you'll feel better. Somebody, I was thirsty when I came in, but right now I feel to overflow it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, have your seat and clap your hands for Pastor Abbeville. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you right now and we honor you as God. And I ask, dear Heavenly Father, that you calm, calm my mind, you calm my spirit, dear Heavenly Father, that you allow me, dear Heavenly Father, to impart into your people. Use my intellect, my knowledge, dear Heavenly Father, things that you have imparted into me, dear Heavenly Father, for I'm going to give a reverent word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. First of all, let me thank my bishop who don't jet it on me. He quick as lightning, y'all. He quick as lightning. And uh, all the press tree who's here tonight and everyone who just came to support. I really do appreciate you coming out. And most of all, my wife, and she's a little bit down on the weather. I'm, uh, I'll be running out of here when I leave here tonight to be go back to the house pillar to stay with her. She, but she's doing great. She kept me up last night talking, so she's doing a whole lot better. Yeah. <laughs> she's doing a whole lot better. She's doing a whole lot better. And here we begins to read in the God's holy word, John 19, 29, and 30. Here begins the reading of God's holy word. Now there was a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled the sponge with vinegar and put it upon the hyssop and put it upon his mouth. And when Jesus therefore has received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. He bowed his head and gave up the ghost. The sixth saying that I come up here for tonight is, it is finished. You know, as I begin to study, it is finished. I understand that it's a summary of one word, the telestai. The telestai. Y'all ain't great in Greek, so I had to learn it all week. It's called the telestai. And it's a summary of one word in Greek, the telestai. It means fulfillment of a task. It means completion of a mission. It means one's life achievement has been finished. It means that the work has been done. You know, I, I love that it says that the work has been done because Jesus Christ said that he came to do the work of the Father, that he glorified the Father in earth by completing his work that he gave him. Amen? I mean, so he says it is finished. The telestai. You know, as I was going on this week, I'm a I'm an interfaith advisor at my job. That means that I go. I have a lot of faiths around me. I have the Muslim. I have the, the Jehovah Witness. I have the Seven Day Adventist. So I have to have a, a rooted, grounded in Christianity. Anybody in here rooted and grounded in Christianity? And and, and and for some reason, this week everybody wants to bother me. Everybody wants to talk to me. Holy Week. What is Holy Week? What is Easter? Why are you celebrating the rabbi? But you know something. It's something about that. Christ. Cross. It is something about that cross. When you ain't got that cross in your religion, you ain't got the true and living God. Amen? It's something about that cross. The Bible said that the cross is the power of God. Amen? I mean, it's something about that cross. And you know it says testalistai. It is filled. You, you know what it's saying there? That that's the end of the law. That it's the fulfillment of the prophecies of old. That it's the end of the penalty of death. You know, but as you, I found out, though, y'all, it's more than that. It is a new dimension of grace that he ushered us into. You know, it's just a new dimension. It's a new step into his grace and, and into his favor. Amen. Anybody glad about his grace? Yeah. And, and I've been, I know I, I'll tell you about I got interface. I got interface.
face that I talk to, people who don't believe, but you know what? Christians that believe but truly don't believe. They don't truly understand. They don't truly get to take advantage of who he is and his grace because it is finished. You know, everything that you have done, everything you need in him has been finished in him. Amen? Amen. You know, and, and then, I, like I said, I see so many Christians believe. You can believe, you can see who Christians who truly don't believe because they weigh down, they burden down, they 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 so they so burden hailing heavy laden on, on on their life. You know, I get tired of wishy washy Christians. I don't know about y'all, but I get so tired of wishy washy Christians. I get tired of Christians that's up today and down tomorrow. I get tired of Christians that run around the church one Sunday and then the next Sunday you got to check the blood pressure. I get tired of Christians who run the street and say, I love you, Jesus, but then you have to check them to make sure they're not in a coma because something don't happen in their life. I get tired of It's a spirit of Christianity, bipolar, schizophrenic that's in the church right now. Testatistic. And I just don't understand because he said testatistic. He said that we should be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the works of the law. He said steadfast, not easily slipped away. He said unmovable, not easy when somebody else comes with another word to halfway believe that one too. He said we should be unmovable, steadfast, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain. Amen? And I begin to learn that the reason why people don't understand it's finished because they put their works on the cross. They put their works before God. When you put your works before God, you don't see God. You see your work. You see your situation. You see your circumstance. You see what you are going through in your life. And you don't see what God has done for you in the cross. He said it is finished. The telestar. Amen. So what he is saying is that when, when you put your works before God, that you can't receive his mercy. You can't receive his grace. You can't receive his favor because his grace, his mercy, and faith come through for what he done on the cross. He gave you what you didn't deserve. He gave you what you didn't earn. He gave you his goodness in, his, in your life. Amen. He gave you that. You know, and I understand that when, when you don't look at these things, when you put these things for the cross, you can't measure up. You're going to always fall short because you're going to always fall short when you don't put it. And, and I believe no one sees it the best than the disciples. The disciples really understood that, that it is finished. You want me to know how the church don't know it's not finished anymore? Because there's no power in the church anymore. There's no authority in the church no more. It is finished. Your salvation has been finished. The, the power of healing, saving, and, and casting out has been finished. It is finished, y'all. It is finished. The Bible says testatistai. What it's, what it's talking about is when a master gives a servant a task and he comes back and he says, and the servant says testatistai. It is finished. The servant has said it is finished, y'all. The servant has said it has been completed. The servant has said it has been fulfilled. The servant has said that, that, that you can ride on his grace and his mercy in his life. And I, I just thank God for Jesus Christ. I thank God for what he has done because if it had not been for the cross, if it had not been for the cross, y'all really don't understand if it had not been for the cross, he could have died when they plucked the Beard, blood the hairs out of his beard. He could have died when he had the cattails on him, but he chose to hold up. Say those sayings on the cross. It is finished. It is finished on the cross, and there's nothing else that we have to worry about. Amen? Amen.